In this video, I'm going to show you how to find duplicates in more than one column. So let's go. Before we get into this video, if this is your first time here at Jellyman Education, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I release new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let's begin. And we're going to start where we always start, which is the data and um, data data. And if you want to follow along, there is a link in the description below and you can download it from my Google Drive. And let me just explain what we have here this is a relatively large data set, probably for most people, it's about 10,000 rows of data. But really, what we're looking at is you see all these yeses. Okay, we're going to filter for just these rows first before we do the whole data set. And the idea is, how do I find duplicates in a single column? All right, that's one thing we want to do. And then the other thing is, how do I find a duplicate in more than two columns? Right? So what does that mean? So for example, let's say I pick, um, let's say I'm just going to pick someone, I'm actually just going to modify the data quickly. So you can kind of see what I mean. Let's look at Tracy Blumstein, right? So here, if I just look at these two columns, forget the rest. All right, we're just going to hide this. Hide, right? And that's what we're looking at. Now, that is a two-column duplicate, right? This whole group. If I look at just the first one, that's a single, uh, single column, that's a duplicate. But what if I made this John Blumstein, right? So actually, if you think of them as common, those are two uh, groups there, right? And that counts as three duplicates for that because it's going to through two columns and those have four duplicates. Okay. If this was something else like Jed and John, uh, not John, let's say like that, this is Peter, Peter, Alex, Michelle, right? Something, something like that. Then in this case, across two columns, there are no duplicates here because you have to look at the whole thing. So one way to kind of visualize this is if I get rid of this, let me just add this on. Okay. So one way to think of a two column uh, duplicate is if I connect these two side by side into a single text, like so for each of them, how many of them come out exactly the same now, we'll just make it case sensitive. Well, that's a duplicate. And I can actually see this there's a function in um, Excel, if I go here to home conditional formatting, highlight cells and go duplicate values, it shows me straight away, okay, that's a duplicate. And because we're looking at two columns, it's a two column duplicate. So in Tableau, we can actually find this way easier. So let me show you how we do that. And I'm not going to save this because I've just messed up the whole data set. Okay, and let's just open that up again, make sure I didn't I really didn't screw it up. Okay, it's all good. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up that data. So I'm going to simply drag and drop. And let's begin. Okay, let's go sheet one. Now if I bring everyone's names in, okay, let's go ahead and do that. There's going to be like 10,000 rows, which is not really a good practice in Tableau, because in Tableau, we're concentrated on kind of visualizations that can represent 10,000 rows or 10 million rows or something like that. And what you'll find is as as you get into larger and larger, larger data sets, like 100,000, 1 million, you simply cannot do it this way. But I'll show you a trick on how to um, figure that out later. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a single column duplicate. Well, how do I find how many times these names come up in our data set. So kind of going back to the raw data, let's just kind of go through that step by step. Let's just bring it up here. Okay, so for example, if I go to the very top, I want to count how many of Brosina Hoffman's there are, right? And if it comes out as more than one, I know I have duplicates. So what we can do is we bring in the field we want to assess. And then here we can use this count button. Now, if you're using like an older version of uh, Tableau, this one might not be there. So I'll show you both. One is you can bring this in and it's really just a count of rows. So I can see here, if I add the label in, this tell me, tells me how many times that name exists in the data. In fact, if I go lowest to highest, which is probably a bit easier, 
I can see straight away anything that's one means it only exists once. So let's go ahead and prove that. I'm going to bring the data set in and we're going to look for Anthony O'Donnell. Let's go Anthony. And I just bought Anthony. A and T. A and T. A and T. Okay. And it should only be one. As you can see, it's there. We'll check one more. Let's look for Carl. Carl. Carl who? Carl Jackson. And there should only be one. And let's check one that's not one. Let's go an anem an anemone. Anemone. That's a usual name. Okay, and that should have two. So that's exactly what it's doing. So let's do a um, a bit of a filter. So I don't want to do the whole data set because it's going to be a bit hard for people to understand. So this check field, we're going to bring in here. And actually, before I do that, let me show you how you do your count if you don't have this count button. So you can take, for example, customer name. I usually use the same thing that I'm visualizing and using the right click drag method. So using right click button on your mouse, right click, drag, and then you're going to have this window come up and you just go count. Make sure you press the CNT and not CNTD, right? The CNTD is a distinct count, which means everything just comes out as one, right? So you want CNT. There you have it. Okay, very easy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply this check filter because we're just going to reduce the data down so we can talk about the theory. Let's click yes and go okay so now we have sort of like a compressed view with just a few of them so i can see anything that is a one is a unique value in that in a single column anything greater than one is uh has duplicates so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a formula here uh here and the formula is going to check for that one and the way we do that is we go let's call this um duplicate check I'm going to go if the count, right, which is this, and I can bring it straight from here, is greater than one, then let's call it duplicates, else unique, and then end. Cool. Got that? And then we just go OK. And now we have this field here. And if I drop this into color, you can see it's actually colored anything with a one with that color and actually i can bring this into rows as well and it will split them up let me get rid of this title bring this over here right so you can see it's like that so let me actually i'm going to also drag this unique to the top up here just so i can see the uniques at the top cool now what I want to do is, how many of these are unique across two columns? Well, it's actually very easy to go that next step. All you have to do is bring in that next column. So let's say I'm going to use subcategory. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to drop this into color. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to show you something. Okay, you can see suddenly everything's shifted. So what has happened exactly? Well, if I go back, these ones, let's say this two, Right, if I go in here and I look at subcategory, I can see that they're actually two different ones. Right, two different ones. So let's look at just Claire and go keep only. Okay, so now we're looking at just a very particular case, and I'm going to take that subcategory and drop it into color. And what's happened is it's split it up into two one is chairs and one is bookcases in fact what happens is if you add this to the rows right you've increased the level of detail you've increased the granularity such that this count no longer equals two it actually equals one because you've split it up so if i kind of go into this name uh, filter let's get rid of that all right get rid of the subcategory that's exactly what's happened the uniques and the duplicates, if you look at just the sizing, right, and we drop this into color, you can see that there's like only one row or there's only one customer that has duplicates here. And if I open this up, what I should see is Brosina, Hoffman twice and then phones twice. So let's have a look at that. Let's go full data. And you can see that's actually a two. Uh, where's the name? That's actually a where's phones two row duplicate let's confirm this so going back to the data set 
you probably notice I do a lot of checking back and forth with the road. That's always good practice. Uh, what am I looking for? So we filter for yes. And we're looking for Brosina. Okay. And then we're looking for phones. Okay. One, two. There you go. Oops. So indeed, there are duplicates if you go across two rows, which confirms what we thought. Now, for these ones, you can see that it's factored in that second dimension, which means the granularity has increased. So therefore, the count is counting across two of those fields. Let's bring them, let's bring them in. All right. So you can see each one of these is now unique because you've split it up into more than two rows. Now you can add as many fields as you like for this. And in fact, we can test this. Let's say I'm looking at, again, Brosina. Actually, a bad example. Let's say I'm looking at Tracy. Let's have a look at these ones. View. And I want to see just something that's different between the two of them. Nothing. So that is indeed a duplicate. Let's go full data. Okay, that's a duplicate as well. So that's a bad example. Let's try. Uh, let's try Brasina. I think I don't think this particular data set will have it. Nah, we'll just have to skip that part. But basically, if you add another field in here, it will just keep splitting it up, and the count will act at the lowest level of granularity. Okay, cool. Now let's say I want to expand this for the whole data set. Well, for this one, instead of having this filter, which looks at like the first fifty rows of data, just take it off. And it will do it for the whole thing, right? And what it's done is, see here all these ones, okay? And I'm going to use that formula we created, duplicate check, and drop it into color. All these ones means it's unique across these two columns, all right? And eventually it's going to switch over and start count. Yep. So all these ones, greater than one, are all now duplicates, okay? That's how you find it. Now, I'm going to cover one other thing, which is, what happens if your data is so massive and you're trying to look for a few duplicates? So let's say I've had cases where I've had, you know, 50 million rows of data and I'm trying to look for one or two duplicates, right? It's very tricky to do. So I'm going to teach you a little trick. So let's go in here. What I do as, a, as the first step before I actually visualize anything, I actually apply the filter first, okay? So what we do is using this count filter, I can drop, uh, not count filter, this count field, I'm going to drop it in filter. Now, kind of thinking ahead, well, what defines a duplicate? Anything where the count is greater than one. So we can go here and go at least two, right? So two or greater, basically, is how you read that, and go OK. Now, nothing's going to happen but what uh, from the looks of it. But what happens is as you visualize, it will already be pre-filtered. So it won't actually show all 50 million rows. It will only show you the duplicates. So let me show you how it works. Let me bring customer name in. Okay. So we have actually, now let me bring the check in first so we can minimize the data. And let's bring in those names. Customer name. Okay. Here we go. And let me bring in the count. Okay. So we brought in the count and let's add in the color. And what should, oops, hang on. That's not right. So let's bring in this duplicate check function that we used before. It's the same thing. You can see all of them are duplicates. Well, how did it do that, right? It's not actually showing any uniques. And that is because of this filter you do straight away. If I get rid of that, it will bring in the uniques as well. So what this is able to do is able to find the duplicates without presenting the massive data set and go straight into it. Right? So it's a neat little trick for finding duplicates in massive data sets. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and, enjoyed and learned some stuff. If this was helpful to you, be sure to hit uh, that like button. It really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, have a great day and bye.